So now that we have an idea of how to create some vector art, right, we can use the shape tools, the ellipse tool, the polygon tool. We introduced the line tool and the pencil tool, which isn't the best tool. Uh, I would like to start talking about the pen tool, and that's where, really, where we're going to spend most of our lecture today. The pen tool is the best tool to create uh, custom vector art, either in InDesign or in Illustrator. Uh, once you can understand how to use the pen tool, you can create what you need to create very easily. However, there's a pretty steep learning curve in being able to do that. And so, um, although this lecture is very short this week, I would like you just to be practicing over and over and over on how to use that pen tool. And so, when you use the pen tool, instead of clicking and dragging like you did with the pencil tool to create something, you have to click every time you would like to add an anchor point. And so you find yourself click, 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 um, and clicking on your workspace to create the shape that you want. If you accidentally click and drag, you'll notice that weird stuff starts to happen because when you click and drag, you're actually adding directional lines. And my recommendation is that until you get good at using the pen tool, do not click and click and drag to add anchor points and curves. Just click, 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 click to make your shape, and then we can go back and we can edit that shape to have some curves. And right now you're probably thinking, well, I have no idea what that means because I'm just looking at a slide that has some words on it. And so let's go ahead and let's jump back to InDesign. And keep in mind that you could do this in InDesign or in Illustrator. Uh, for our class, obviously, you're going to do the project in InDesign since it it is an InDesign class, but what we're learning right now is cross-platform compatible, and anytime you have a pen tool, it works the same exact way. And so if we jump back to our document in InDesign, this time I'm going to grab the pen tool, which looks like a little fountain pen, and you'll notice that you can't just click and drag like you did with the line tool. If I click and drag, I'm dragging, trying to make like waves, and all I do is I get this line that comes out from an anchor point. And so if we zoom in on it, you can see that it created an anchor point where I clicked. And then I'll do it again over here. When I click, it creates an anchor point. Let's, let's get rid of that. Uh, when I click, it creates an anchor point. But if I click and I drag, the anchor point stays where I clicked. But as I drag, I get these little handlebars. Those are the direction lines, and that's what's causing that curve to come out. And so if I let go, I've created a line that has a curve, and if I click over here and I drag, I'm creating another line, but the straight line that's coming out from the anchor point, these blue handlebars, they're not the path. It's that arc that you see that's going up right now, and so when I let go, I will create a shape that way. However, if you don't know the pen tool that well, it's really difficult to make the pen tool create the shape that you're wanting it to create. And so one of the things that I recommend is don't click and drag at all. Just click, 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 and make your shape geometrically first. And then we can always, I'm going to go back to the first one. Watch the cursor. When I hover over the first anchor point, I get a little circle. That means I'm going to close my path, and so it becomes a continuous path that goes all the way along. After I create a geometric shape, you can go back and you can edit the anchor points to have curves or not have curves, but to me it's easier to create it out of shapes first and then go back and kind of start curving them. And so if I wanted to make maybe a custom logo of the letter R, instead of trying to draw an R, I might just add, I'm going to hold shift to make straight lines, I might add my anchor points to go in the shape that I want them to go. I can always go back and fix them if they're not in the right place. And then we can add some anchor points here. And you can create the letter R, and then you can go back and you can modify them. To modify anchor points, you need to use your white mouse. And so all throughout the semester up until this point, I always say, when in doubt, use the black mouse. And if the black mouse is not working, then you can use your white mouse. So instead of using the selection tool for this, I'm going to use the white mouse, which is the direct selection tool. And if you hover over a vector art shape with a selection tool, you can see all the different anchor points that it's made of. And so if I wanted to maybe straighten up this line here, I can click. See how they're all white now? If I click, it becomes blue. And with my arrow keys, I can nudge it into place until it is at the right angle for what I want. Maybe I want to move the whole thing over. If you hold shift, you can grab both of the anchor points, and you can move them both around. 
Above and beyond that, you can't really do too much with the white mouse. You can kind of move anchor points. If I had handlebars, so I said if you click and then you click and drag, you'll get handlebars on your shape. If you have a handlebar on your shape or a directional line and you select the shape, so I'm going to select this first anchor point right here, it should not have any handlebars because I just clicked. But if I come over to the other one and I click, you can see that I have two handlebars. And so with the white mouse, I could come back and I could modify these to create the angle that I would like it to be at. And so if I had handlebars, I could kind of modify them in some way. So you can flip it and change it if you want to. And so that leaves us in a little bit of a situation here that I want to modify my little custom R logo here, but I don't have any directional lines to be able to control those curves. And that's where the other tools within the pen tool come into play. If you push and hold on the pen tool, you'll have an, an add anchor point tool, a delete anchor point tool, and a convert direction point tool. I'm going to ignore these two in the middle for now. I will come back to them, but for now I want to look at this convert direction point tool. And so I don't want to mess up my R yet, so I'm going to make a couple, here's my little arc again. I'm going to make a couple little shapes to play around with. And so I have two shapes or two paths or lines that we're going to work with. And I'm going to switch my pen tool to be the convert direction point tool. If I look at these, I know from past experience, even in this video, that this line has two anchor points, one on either side, and there are no directional lines. And I know that this arc has a directional line, um, an anchor point with no directional lines on the left and an anchor point with two directional lines on the right. If you're not grasping that concept, stop the video and start the video over, the whole lecture over, until you get to the point where you see the examples that I showed previously. Um, when you're using the Convert Anchor Point tool, I think it's actually easiest to use the Direct Selection tool and to select the anchor point first so you can see what you're working with. Can you notice how if I select the Convert Anchor Point tool here, I can't really see the anchor points? It'll still work, it's just be, it'll just be more confusing to use. And so if you use your white anchor point first, let's zoom in over here. Let's move this guy. Whoops, I did not mean to do that. Let's move this guy over here. If I use my white mouse or my direct selection tool first, I can select the anchor points to see what's going on. And then when I have it selected, you can see that it's blue and it's selective, it's active. If I use the convert anchor point tool, I can kind of see what I'm about to do. And so on, let's switch to this anchor point over here. If I'm looking at the right hand anchor point and I don't want there to be a curve here, if you click a handlebar or a directional line with your convert anchor point tool, it will delete and it will get rid of the handlebar and so you'll have a straight line. If we switch to our straight line, if you have a, an anchor point selected and you click and drag on the anchor point, and so if I click and drag here, you'll get handlebars. Now you don't have the option without key modifiers and things like that to only add one handlebar, and so you get two. And so if you remember from the previous video, the left hand handlebar represents any curves coming into the anchor point, and the right hand handlebar represents any curves leaving the anchor point. And so I don't really need this one right here because there's no path going to the left. And so if I click on it, I can get rid of it. And it did absolutely nothing to the right hand side. And now that I have a handlebar, I could switch back to my white mouse and I could move that handlebar or directional line to create the curve that I wanted to have. I could even come back, I could select the other anchor point, grab the convert anchor point tool, I can add handlebars, delete the one I don't need, and now I could use them in combination to create the curve that I want for my project. And so let's apply that to the letter R. And so if I'm working on the letter R here and I wanted to have some areas that were straight but some areas that were curved, we can come through and we can make those adjustments. And so maybe I want the bottom to be angular, but I want the inside of the R here to be curved. And so if we select that anchor point, let's zoom in a little bit. If we select that anchor point with the direct selection tool, and then we use the convert anchor point tool to click and drag, because right now it has no handlebars or no directional lines. But if we click and drag, you can see that it's going to add a curve. If you go the wrong direction, it's going to flip it and look weird. Just kind of hold it and recognize that that's happening and move the other direction. You can make it as big as you want. We can always modify this. But at the very least, you just have to add those, those curves. 
Now if we take a look at it, and maybe we really want the curve that's coming up into the R, but I want a straight line coming out, I can do that too. With the Convert Anchor Point tool selected, click on the handlebar that contains the curve leaving the anchor point, and now you can have a curve coming up into the R and a straight line coming out. Now maybe you want to have a curve coming up and you want a straight line coming out, but then you want it to curve into the anchor point down here. You could do that as well. And so we can select the bottom anchor point, grab the Convert Anchor Point tool, click and drag to add that. All right. So now we have a full curve, and I don't want the curve coming out in the bottom, so I'll get rid of that. Switch back to your white mouse or your direct selection tool, and now you can control the curve. But can you see how there's a curve down here, but the junction of the top of the R is still straight? And that's what I was trying to create. And so now if we go back to that anchor point that we're just modifying, obviously I don't want it as blown out as it is there, I can curve it to be the curve that I would like it to be for the project. Could even grab that anchor point with the white mouse and move it over. Maybe it's not, uh, it's too wide. And maybe the curve goes the opposite direction, like such. And you could go all the way around the R and do the inside of the R, um, and you could make a custom logo that way. Before I leave this little demo, I want to point out something else. Um, you don't have to create custom uh, artwork to be able to do that. If you have, let's say, let's do a polygon and let's do a star. And so let's do like an eight-sided star with a 30% inset. Then we have a star. You could have some vector art that's already been created, and you can grab it with your white mouse, your direct selection tool, and then you can come through. Maybe I want the inside of each one of these stars to uh, be curved. And so if I zoom in on it, I can select the anchor point with the white mouse, use the convert direction point tool, and then I drag it the wrong way. You can drag it, and you can curve, whoops, you can curve the inside of your shape. And so then you can grab the next one and you can repeat that over and over and curve the inside of your whole shape. You could even, if you really wanted to, you could do the outside too. So you could grab the outside of the point of the star. You can, I keep pulling it the wrong direction, you can pull it out. And so then you can use um, what is to me a really simple tool, a polygon tool to create a star, but then you can customize it by rounding the edges of your shape.